My name's Gary Burns, I'm 39 years old, I'm addicted to crack cocaine, I'm home, it's on and off since I'm 13. So how are you Gary? I'm doing good, cold. Cold, it's very cold. Yeah, cold. it's too cold man. Are you sleeping outside at the moment Gary? I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping at the cross from the big bank. I read the big ball out there, the two bank links across the road. Okay, I'm down. sleeping there. On Dame Street, is it? Yeah, near uh, the college. Okay, and uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you ended up? Uh, this is my choice. I'm on and off since I'm 13. I don't do drugs in my house. If I'm going to go on near drugs, I'll go homeless instead. I won't do drugs at all in my house. How long have you been homeless? Uh, on and off since I'm 13. Jeez, that's a long time. Yeah, I know. It's addiction primarily, isn't it? Yeah. Tell us about that, just briefly. Uh, my first time doing drugs, I was 13 years old. And I asked my brother what he was doing, and he told me it was French hash. So I came into town, asked someone of mates and said, I can get a little bag of brown. He said, yeah, and I asked him what's the quickest way to do it, and he told me to bang it up. That's just where people to inject it. You know? yeah. yeah. So I did it. And since then, I'm off gear in about five, seven years. Mom, you've met her down the last year and a half. Okay. So you managed to get off after several years, am I right? You, yeah. you got off heroin and methadone. Yeah. Um, so how did your situation stay homeless? Uh, my situation has been homeless. It's really my choice, being homeless. Okay. Can you elaborate on that, Gary, just a little bit, please? The drugs has me homeless. Might as well say it that way. Okay, so just to clarify, you're off heroin, yeah. you're off methadone, but yeah. you're still oh. taking the... Crack cocaine. Crack cocaine, okay. Yeah. Tell us about that, how, how that affects you on a daily basis. It doesn't really affect me, I just... It's like coke. You chase the buzz from the coke. Yeah. I'm just ch chasing the buzz from the rock. So I just, I sit here doing money, I get scarred up, I go off and scarred and then I'll do that. And then I sit back down and see can I get more money. It's like a routine. Yes, bro. And I understand that you've been quite honest to say it's a choice. Like yeah. You're not blaming anybody. You're saying, no, it's my choice. This is my choice. But would you be fair enough to say your choice as regards the drug, you don't really have a choice at this stage because of the way it has you obsessed? Yeah. That would be fair to say. Yeah. You? So you're just being noble saying it's your choice. You really yeah. don't at this stage have a choice. Mm. Be fair. I can have a choice to go home if I want okay. to then. Why would you choose to stay in this really, really cold weather, bro? Because I don't want to do drugs in my man's house. I understand. I want to keep four out of drugs, like all my family, all my brothers and everything were all addicts. So I don't want to do that in the house. To protect your mom, maybe. Yeah, I don't want to sit in your room all day and doing rock, 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 rock. Let me ask you, Gary, how would your mom feel if you died out here? Uh, she was very upset. She would, she Yeah, I tried to kill myself there a couple months ago. Tell me about that. Uh, I was down. I was very, like, I don't want to even live. So I haven't checked it in years. So I got walks, got heroin, injected myself. And I collapsed, uh, I died. You might as well say I died. But it wasn't for Merchant's Key. You saved me, <laughs> kept me alive. Kind of I wouldn't be here. So you're telling me that you purposely took uh, an extraordinarily large amount yeah. that you would normally take with the intent to die? Yeah. <laughs> what, was, what brought you to that point, bro? Apart from the, just the general assumptions of what the addiction what pushed you to that point? I haven't got a clue at the time. I just wanted to die. It's just too much. Yeah, I was like staying on drugs and going on and off home. It's just wasn't so, right. So, Gary, um, if you don't mind, let me just re-examine that, what you talk about, it being the choice. Do you not think in that same way that you had that choice to be here, like initially, and we've discussed that, that choice is probably gone from you at this stage, but do you not think you still have a choice like, to pull up out of that? Yeah, I do. I do too, bro. I have a choice to do that. I can go home, I can stay here. But I'd rather stay here instead of keep doing drugs in the house. But what about 
there's an alternative, another option there you haven't mentioned. What about going home or quitting the drugs? Do you think you I have? I have. I was, I was out to crack for two and a half years. Right. And I just turn around one day, I have one pipe and see what happened. I thought it was going to be all right, but no, bang, back out on the street. It's insanity, isn't it? So yeah. thinking it's going to be different. Um, so, bro, like you're coming up to the 40 now. Yeah, I'm 40 next year. Look, I didn't get clean until I was 56. So, there's hope, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen to me, man. Would you not... For Christmas, go home clean to you, man. This is a bizarre question for me to be asking you, and I don't even know you. You know, like, but... I'm thinking of it, but I don't know at the same time. I can go home if I want to. But it's all about my addiction. Like, I've been, like, the longest I've stayed over in our man's house for about a year, year and a half. And that's when the COVID hit. Yeah. So, at least you're not as important as some of these. People who are really homeless, yeah. Nowhere to go, but you're putting yourself through an awful torture. I don't you. mind it. I'm used you don't to it. Mind no, I'm used to, to it. Kill yourself, though. Think of that. That time I just was down. I didn't like. Is it any wonder? I don't know. I just like this lifestyle guy that you wouldn't be down. It's so fucking normal to be down. If you, if you're, like you know the the expression down and out. Yeah, that's like, why I'm always like, if I'm down. I might do something. I'm always happy, telling jokes, singing, and all that. So just that's just a distraction. That's not, yeah. That's not really what's going on, though, is it? No, not really. Yeah. <laughs> it's just standing in the back, it's still in the back of the head. Of course it is, bro. Listen, listen. You've been very honest. You haven't sat here blamed anybody. You haven't uh, blamed society or family. Or, you, no. You've taken full. Tell me. Responsibility. So it's all you is going to get you up out of there as well. Yeah. But there is help as well, and you're going to need that. You know, yeah. A little bit of support, bro. I've been support merchants, kid. They talk, talk to them all the time. They're good people, aren't they? Yeah. Helps a lot of uh, people I know over the years. Yeah, I'm going there since I'm 13. 13 years ago. Yeah, you remember you used to be inside yes, the church. Yes, I do. Around the back. No, it used to be in the front. The, the front. Now. They used to be at the front. It used to be at the back of the living. Yeah. Around the back of where it is now. Yeah. It's on the front now. But you used to go in the back door, and there was a little coffee. Yeah. You used to sit in. Am I right? Yeah. I remember it, bro. That's twenty years ago. That's well over that. Is it? Yeah. That's right. how old I am. <laughs> I've been going there since I'm thirteen. What are you gonna do at Christmas, bro? Uh, I might go home. or... I don't know. Truthful. I haven't got a clue. I've got you, but I've got you. Um, it's good that you're plugging in with Merchants Key. Yeah. And do you talk to the man, though? No, for a while. I haven't spoke to I have no phone, and uh, not well, listen to me now. I'm going to tell you something. See this, this interview? This is going to end up on YouTube. It's there forever in the universe. Do you understand? Yeah. In the cyberverse. Give it a little message to your man. For Christmas, so it's there, bro. And she may not ever get to see it, but at least it's there. Your sisters, your nieces, your I don't know, your family might see it down the line. Give her a little Christmas message. Ma, I love you so much. I miss you and happy Christmas. And listen, thank you, man, for talking to us. I'm sorry. Today, I really appreciate it. And thank you for being honest. More important than that. Yep. All right, brother.